Welcome to Pre-Med HQ's MCAT prep course. My name is Dave Carlson and I'll be one of the instructors guiding you through the essential MCAT knowledge for all of the different MCAT sections. We're going to start with a discussion of biomolecules and before we do that I think it's very important to discuss the crucial role that water plays in all physiology. So many times you're going to encounter questions where just thinking about the role of water can help you come to the answer. So what we have here is the various building blocks of life. We have glycerol, amino acids, sugars, fatty acids, nitrogenous bases, and phosphate groups. And these, when combined, form most of the major biomolecules that allow the cell to function in the various ways that it does. All of these can be combined using a condensation reaction where you take the OH group of one thing and a hydrogen from another one and you combine them in a way that yields water. You may have also heard of condensation reactions being referred to as dehydration synthesis. But all of these different things, the peptide bonds that join two amino acids, the glycosidic linkages that join sugars, the esterification reactions that turn, that allow fatty acids to connect to glycerol, all of these are condensation reactions, and all of those yield some water as a product of that reaction. Because these are all joined using condensation reactions, it allows you to mix and match. So for example, you can have amino acids joined with sugars and get peptidoglycans, which are the major component of the bacterial cell wall, or proteoglycans, which are a major component of the extracellular matrix. If you take a nitrogenous base, such as adenine, and attach that to three phosphate groups, you have ATP, which is the major energy substrate of all the cells in the human body. And if you take nitrogenous bases combined with a sugar and phosphate backbone, then you have the makings of DNA and RNA, which is how we store all of our genetic information. If you have fatty acids joined with glycerol, that forms triglycerides, which are the major energy storage substrate of adipose cells. And if you have two fatty acids joined to glycerol and a phosphate group, that gives you phospholipids, which you probably are familiar with as part of the phospholipid bilayer. And as you may have learned in your biology classes, the phospholipid bilayer is a very, very important structure because that forms the cell membrane. You have the very polar phosphate group, which tends to be hydrophilic and sticks toward the outside, and the hydrophobic fatty acids that form the inside of that membrane and the inside of that bilayer. And that allows the cell to separate its environment from its surroundings. All of this is defined by the hydrophilic and hydrophobic reactions, how these pieces interact with water. This becomes particularly relevant when you start to deal with hormones. For example, peptide hormones are very polar and say they move easily through the bloodstream, but they struggle to get through that membrane and thus they have to interact with receptors on the outside of the cell and lead to a signaling cascade. Steroid hormones are the other way around. Steroid hormones are lipid-based and they're nonpolar, so they can easily move through that membrane and then operate at the level of the nucleus, thus changing the transcription and translation of various proteins. Now, any of these condensation and hydrolysis reactions can occur spontaneously when you have these substrates in an aqueous environment. But in the body, we tend to use enzymes in order to control the rate of this reaction and make it happen a lot more quickly. The way that we do that is through enzymes that are a combination of amino acids and are folded in such a way that they can perform specific functions. The reason that those amino acids have those shapes, which we'll be discussing in the next lesson, is because of the side chains of the amino acids and how they interact with the water surrounding it. All of those allow for the formation of an active site and they allow them to then facilitate and catalyze these reactions going forward. So the more that you think about water as it relates to physiology, the stronger you will be at reasoning through all of the functions of the major biomolecules that we'll be discussing throughout this course.